Today we're going to create a Ubuntu virtual machine within our desktop. The process is very similar to the Windows 10 install that we did last time. Um, the first step is to go to ubuntu.com and then you'll find on the far right of their menu there's an option for download. We're going to download the desktop edition, so click desktop. And now on this screen here, it's just going to confirm which version you want. Um, we're actually going to scroll down and we're going to use the most recent version. Uh, this one is the long-term support edition. So this is the stable known version that, they're, that they plan on keeping around for a, a period of time. Uh, this is the most recent version and this is perfectly stable. Um, many, many servers are running this today. Uh, so we're going to go down and we're going to download this version. Now, if you're watching this video later, there may be a newer version yet. Uh, now here it's just going to ask you some, some questions about the community. If you go all the way down to the bottom here, it says, nope, just take me to the download. And so now it should automatically just pop up to save that ISO. Uh, if not, you can click the download now button. All right, so now we're going to create a new VM. So we're going to click new. And as we start typing Ubuntu, it's going to autofill uh, that it's a Linux operating system. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select memory, and this will be based on how much memory your machine has. I'm going to do about six gigs. I'm going to click Create, uh, and here I'm going to leave this all the same, uh, 10 gigs. If you plan on doing this for more than a burner box, you may want to create more. Click Create. Now we're going to go ahead and attach that ISO, so click Settings, and then on Storage. You'll see the controller is empty, so we're going to go ahead and add that ISO that we just downloaded. Now we're going to click OK. So now go ahead and start this. Now this is automatically going to boot off of that uh, CD drive, just like it did with Windows. And it's going to wor work very similar. Uh, the only difference is, is the prompts are going to be a lot different, and there's going to be far fewer of them, and it'll probably install much quicker. Now even if you're a diehard Windows fan, uh, and you've never tried Linux or any of the Linux variants, uh, don't be shied away from it. Uh, they've come a long, long way. Uh, they're very, very similar to Windows. In fact, there's pretty much nothing that uh, Ubuntu uh, can't do uh, that Windows can. Uh, there's a few exceptions, but in general, uh, especially for a burner box, Ubuntu works really, really well. Uh, not only that, it's less susceptible to things like viruses and um, hacking uh, just because of the platform itself. So it's definitely my go-to choice when it comes to things like this. So even though you may have never used Linux before, uh, now would be a great time to go ahead and set one up, set up a VM and play around with it and just see for yourself how easy it is. So just go ahead and click the Install Ubuntu button. It's going to ask you a couple of questions about the uh, uh, updates. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just say, yep, go ahead and download those. Go ahead and install uh, third-party components. Click Continue. And now it's going to ask you how and where you want to install it. Uh, since this is a virtual machine, let's just go ahead and say, erase the disk and install Ubuntu, and then click the Install Now button. Uh, there is a confirmation here just to confirm, yep, we're good. We're going to wipe everything. That's all right. Click Continue. So even though it's installing in the background, um, it's going to ask you some prompts. Now, we can actually make this window a little bit bigger so we can see the Continue button. Uh, some of them just don't quite fit within the VM. Uh, so you can go ahead and pick your location, uh, keyboard layout, uh, and then there's a couple others. Now, one difference between Windows and Linux is Linux won't let you uh, use an empty password, um, as you'll see. Uh, now, one of the things you can do is you can say log in automatically, uh, and then you can just use something like your username as your password. You do need to remember it because it will come up in the future, um, but this will actually just log in automatically now. One of the things I do, since a lot of times I'll create these VMs and then I'll return to them months later, uh, and I won't remember those passwords, if you want, you can actually set the password as text. If you go into the setting and description, you can just type in what your password was so that in the future, if you come back, uh, you can always come into the description and see what you set your password as. Our Ubuntu installed just fine. Uh, it did ask you to reboot just like the Windows did. Uh, it, you don't need that separate program to install because Ubuntu has it built in. Uh, so you'll see it auto adjusts the screen uh, and then it also auto corrects for the keyboard and the mouse so it doesn't capture them. Um, so there you have it. There's your in Ubuntu installed. As you can see, it has common programs like Firefox already installed, and the experience is very, very similar, if not identical, to the Windows counterpart. Uh, you'll see the menus are the same. Uh, one difference is, is that the menu is always at the very, very top. So even if your program is not maximized, 
uh, that's that'll be where your menu is at. So you'll see in Windows normally the menus down menus down here. Uh, in Linux you'll see the menus always at the top. So a little bit more like a Mac. Uh, now one thing that also might get you a little bit confused is that the exit program is in the top left as opposed to the top right within Linux. So when dealing with a virtual machine, when you're done with it and you want to save or exit, uh, there's a couple of things you can do. You can use the normal uh, virtual machines shutdown option. So in, in Linux uh, or in Ubuntu, you can come up here and you can say shut down and then do a shutdown from here. Uh, another option is, is uh, most modern operating systems will support this shutdown here. So if you use the ACPI shutdown within the VirtualBox menu, it'll actually trigger the same thing on the host or on the guest operating system and ask you what you want to do. Uh, if you don't want to shut your machine down and you want to treat it more like a laptop and you just want it to be right where it was when you left, uh, you can actually just shut it down and it'll store the state. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do for right now because I'm going to continue to use this in the future. So if you just close the window, it's going to ask you, do you want to save the machine's state? And if you say OK, then it'll essentially put the machine, the virtual machine, into a hibernate mode. And then when you come back, it'll actually be right where you left it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do today, and that's where we'll end this video. If you like this video, be sure to head over to our Deep Web University, where you'll find more videos, white papers, and articles about open source web harvesting for your business. I would also invite you to join our monthly newsletter, where we send out exclusive insights and partner updates. If you're ready to continue learning, I've got a couple videos already queued up for you. 